happy Father's Day. We hope that you'll be celebrating with your family this wonderful day when we honor those men in our lives that have really made a change or may really been a role model for us to follow. And if you're a, a dad out there who has stood by your family, has provided as well as you could all your life, has gathered your children around you and has loved them, I'm honoring you today. Because you know what? You're a special person. In a day when everybody wants to get away from commitment, doesn't want to accept their responsibility after they father children, doesn't want to provide for them, give them food to eat, I want to tell you that you're a good role model. And God bless you. God bless you abundantly if you take care of your family. And I know that God loves you in a very special way. The man in my life that was the best role model in the world was my own father. And I'm going to share with you because he was a unique individual. He and my mother married on January the 1st, 1934. And that day he began to keep a daily diary. My dad passed away in October of 1992 and every night of his life he wrote in the diary. Our family has 56 volumes. I mean, just incredible amount of information of he and my mother's life together. It's their whole lives are documented in these books. And I chose the one, now I'm not going to show the year, but you probably can figure it out because it's something I'm going to read. I don't care, it's 1946. So now you know how old I am, but that's all right. This was when I was born. It says, um, now, January the 8th, because I was born at 1.17 in the morning, he said, um, then we came back home to pick up Lillian in Florence, who was my mom and her best friend. And about 9.45, we left for Columbia Hospital in Wilkinsburg. And at 1.17 a.m., Wednesday, January the 9th, an eight pound, 10 and a half ounce baby girl came into our home. But the Lord is good, bless his name. Lillian was feeling fine when we left the hospital at 2.30 a.m. I was home about 3 a.m. I called Wilma, who was my aunt, to tell her first, and Ronnie, who's my brother, just then awakened and Aunt Wilma told him. So finally to bed at 3.30 a.m. The new baby's name is Ruth Arlene Bobeck, and she weighed eight pound, 10 and a half ounces at birth. My dad had a unique way of telling detail and then just letting his emotion, his feeling toward God, just roll out his, of his pen like he did from his mouth. And he would go on the next day saying he woke up and who he told and whatever. My mother was quarantined in the hospital for nine days when I was born. And that was an extreme hardship for her because she had not been away from her boys or my dad for that amount of time. And he talks about that. But one of the things that, I, you know, we've been reading through this today here in the studio and the crew is all fascinated of the detail that dad gave on what was going on, the events in the world. Well, he says there was a lot of rationing because this was right after the war. He says, butter is selling for 95 cents a pound at the A&P. Soap powder is scarce as is. Face soap and laundry soap is very scarce. Sugar is hard to get, as are all the jellies. Oleo is difficult to obtain and so is meat. Lunch meat also is scarce and so it goes, but nothing to worry about. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, I will never forsake thee, so that we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will fear not what man shall do unto me. What a legacy my own father left for me. And I have to share you, with you this Bible that he used. He, he was a lover of God's word. And you know, this is the book that he lived by. He was a role model, a good role model, because he patterned his life, his feelings, his emotions after God's word. And that's after God himself. I have to show you how he, you know, some people would never put a mark in a Bible. Well, my dad believed it was a tool and you use a tool and you use it for whatever. Any little idea or thought that the Lord would give him when he was, when he would be reading, dad would write it in the pages. He wrote here, oh, how I love thy law. This is his reference study Bible. Then he would page after page, every little thought you can see, he would just write down here and there. He kept, he was, I told dad very often, dad, you should have been a statistician because every little detail meant so much to him. Here he wrote, let me find the right page, how many times he had read through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. 
He began April the 1st, 1930, and by September the 30th, 1930, he had read it through the first time completely. That's a lot of reading, boy. He was hungry for the word. He, if you go down here, you'll see he didn't finish the 26th time because he passed away and went on to be with the Lord before he was able to finish that. But what a wealth of this word was in my dad. Look at this. Page after page after page, you can see where he would mark it with things that were important to him. You can see even marked up in the, in the uh, margins. And, and he didn't just read through the text. He would read all the helps, read up and down, all the references. That's what he called really studying the Bible. I've, one of the most wonderful sights that I can remember is seeing Dad sitting at the kitchen table. He'd have his colored pens with him and the ruler, and he would be reading, just pouring over the Word of God. This legacy... I can't tell you the value it has in my life. He was a special man. And if you have a godly father who took you to church, who taught you of the things of God, that's more important than anything else in the world. But if you're sitting out there and you say, but Arlene, I didn't have that kind of an upbringing. But if you're a man, you can be that kind of a father to your children. You can be that example that they will look up to and say, my dad took me to church. My dad taught me about God. Do you know that you're blessed if you honor your parents? Do you know that the Word says that? That's what this program is about today. I'm honoring the parents. I'm honoring particularly fathers. I don't want to leave my mother out of the equation because she was a godly woman too, and I've told you about her many times. But my dad was a special man, and everybody that knew him knew how special he was. So today I'm preparing his very favorite meal. Now you say, and I tell you what it's going to be, you're going to say, now Arlene, that's not very healthy. Do you know my dad never weighed, uh, there was only a four pound variance in his weight all his life. He went from 158 to 162. He had good principles and much discipline in what he ate though. He would never think to pick up a donut before he would have his good breakfast in the morning. So today, in honor of my dad, even though he's in heaven with the Lord, I'm going to prepare his T-bone steak with creamy mashed potatoes and gravy and the dill carrots that he liked and the broccoli. And you have to have, you absolutely have to have strawberry shortcake. On today's program, we're honoring you, Father. You're a very special person. We'll be right back to get started in just a minute. today's at-home hint. Add two tablespoons of corn syrup to your brownie batter for really moist and chewy brownies. If you have an at-home hint, a favorite recipe, or just a friendly greeting you'd like to share, we'd like to hear from you. Post it in the comments of this video or visit our Facebook page. Well, today, like I said, we're honoring fathers, and Dad loved T-bone steak many times. You know, he was a pastor all my life. I can remember him being a pastor. And many times from the pulpit, he would say, you know, it would be about a 10 minutes to 12 when your stomach's ground, saying, oh, boy, when I get out of here, we're going to go and eat. He would, something in his, one of his sermons would come up, and he'd say, yeah, you know, I, I just know when you get that T-bone steak with the mashed potatoes and that rich brown, he'd call it mahogany gravy. And everybody would be going, oh because they'd make you so hungry. Those of you that remember my dad and were in our church, you'll know what I'm talking about because we all moan together. But anyway, um, he liked it broiled and he liked it pan fried. But mostly he liked it tender. And he would tell you, you could fix an elaborate meal and if it wasn't tender, he never held back. He'd say, well, Arlene, the vegetables are great, the potatoes are great, but you know, that steak's a little tough. Then you kind of go, oh, Dad, I bought the best I could find. I thought it would be good. But that's just the way he was. He told the truth, but he told it in love. So today, in honor of my father, my precious dad, we got a couple of really nice T-bones. And what I would do uh, when I was preparing it for him, because this is the way he liked it, I take a clove of garlic, he was a great lover of garlic, and just rub it over the skin of that T-bone, just on both sides if you can. And you want to cut it so that you can get the flavor of it out there. And just rub it like that. And we'll rub it over, use the other half here. You know, when I think about my dad, I think about how much he enjoyed good food. 
how much he enjoyed fellowship around the table. Reading through the diaries, you can see where he would be at my aunt's or he would be, uh, my mother and dad would pack up the boys and they would go here or go there, or go to camp meeting, go to visit my grandmother. And it was always wonderful because he enjoyed people. He enjoyed being with people. That was an important part of his life. Now I'm just gonna pepper these down just a little bit. Don't do too much. Now you can add other seasonings if you like. If maybe you, some of your family likes, um, I don't know, maybe some onion salt on there or maybe use onion powder. Or maybe you wanna do uh, some special herbs, whatever. The important thing is you start out with a really good cut of meat. That's important. Now I've put some oil and some butter. If you use all butter, it'll burn brown, so you don't wanna do that. But the combination is good. And we're just gonna put these in. We're gonna let them, they look good. Yeah. And what I like to do is put that little clove of garlic in there just to flavor, because we have to make some gravy with that, okay? We have some cloths, Linda. Could I get some cloths, please? Okay, you don't wanna put the lid on this because if you do, what will happen here is it will like boil it and steam it. You don't want that taste, you want a grilled taste. And to get that, you have to keep your, your heat pretty high. Keep it pretty high so it gets going pretty good. Okay, now also we have some mashed potatoes that we've been cooking. Here we have our carrots. And he loved carrots with dill and just butter on them. That was one of the ones he really, really liked. So let me make sure I get my flame going here. There we go. And this, dad liked meat. Everything he, every kind of meat that he liked had to be well done. You would never give him a rare steak of any kind. Pork chops, the stuff had to be falling off of it. He would even prefer it would be dry as opposed to being pink. If it was pink, he didn't want any part of it. And do you know, it's funny because dad believes the Bible uh, where it talks about not eating the cloven hoof. And so for years, my dad never ate pork. When he'd ham at holiday times, we would prepare him chicken or something like that instead of ham because he just felt that that's what the Bible said and that's what he believed. Thank you, Lynn. And so that's, that was dad's theory and he ate well. He ate good, he ate um, very, he wasn't a health food nut, but he just ate good balanced meals. A lot of fruit, a lot of vegetables. He liked his sweets though, I have to tell you, he really did. Okay, so we've got the steaks going, we have the potatoes going, we've got the carrots going, we're gonna put the broccoli, a lot of vegetables with this. Okay, now we're gonna do the shortcake for our strawberry shortcake. This is a very easy one. This is the one he liked the most. I would try to give him different ones. No, he didn't want that. He wanted this one because this is the one mom always made. And this is very simple. It's on the Bisquick package. This is about two and a third, let me make sure, two and a third cups of Bisquick. We just put that in our bowl. We have a half a cup of milk. We have about three tablespoons of sugar. And then we're gonna add some melted butter. This is about uh, three tablespoons of melted butter. And we just mix this up. Mom used to make these a lot for us. We would, um, she'd be, she, she had a, like when the strawberries were, were really in season and she had um, good fresh strawberries and maybe not too much for dinner because this would fill you up. And we make this all the time because this is what dad really liked. But she'd make little individual ones. She wouldn't make a big one. But because it's a special event for Father's Day, we're gonna make one large shortcake and put it together. You wanna mix this just until it's moistened. Make sure I got all that milk out of there because it seems a little dry. Okay. Clean off that spoon. You want to preheat your oven at 425. Now don't turn those steaks over. If you're doing them on, in the skillet, do not turn your steak over. Leave it on one side until it's completely cooked through. Now we're gonna pour this into a pan that is not greased. It's a, you can do it into a cake pan or a pie pan, whichever. It will work. And basically, we're just going to flatten it, just like this. It's amazing how short this cake comes up. As Dad used to call it how short it was. Never quite understood his relationship to tall, 
that he meant by a short cake. But I think he meant it was, it was flaky and it was delicious. All right. We're going to put this. Here we go. Just like that. This goes in the oven at 425 for about 10 to 15, 15 to 20 minutes. All right. And we're going to watch the time there. It, it browns, it gets nice, and it gets flaky, it puffs up. And then you let it cool, and then you split it. Now what you do with these strawberries, in the meantime, you do a little maintenance here. The strawberries, you want to clean them like this. You rinse them first. Don't rinse them after you've cut them. Because if you do, okay, because if you do, all the juice from the berries goes down the drain. So you wash them, rinse them first, and then you cut them up in slivers. Then when you're going to sugar them, which is what you're going to need, you take some sugar and you just pour over it like this. And you sweeten these a little at a time because you want to be sure if, this, if the berry is real sweet, you don't need a lot. Then you take a knife and you just start cutting down through, down through your ripe berries. I like somebody's at the door. Could somebody get that? Thanks. Okay, so you just keep cutting down through your berries because what that does is that renders the juice as you keep cutting down through there. Some people take a potato masher. I don't want them in strings. I want pieces of berries. And you're going to need probably a little bit more than that. So you add a little bit at a time, just a bit, like that. OK? And just keep going. And then you want to refrigerate these until you're ready to use them. And you'll be amazed at the juice that comes up off these berries and what you're doing is you're cutting the sugar into the berry to make it real, real sweet. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut those some more, but I need to check on my steak here. And let's see if it's nice and brown. Is that beautiful? Mm, mm, mm. You know it. OK, well, it's time to turn them over because they have browned beautifully. And we're going to let them continue to cook. We have our garlic in there. And I'm going to show you how to make those creamy mashed potatoes when we come back. Stick with us now. We'll be right back. Do you love watching At Home with Arlene Williams? Then be sure to check out our new YouTube channel. It's filled with classic episodes from over 20 years of At Home, and more videos are added each day. And don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Well, we're going to show you how to make those good mashed potatoes that Dad always loved. We've boiled our potatoes. Now, remember, you want to cut them small so it doesn't take all day for them to cook because the bigger they are, the longer it takes. And you cut them all about the same size. Then I use my mixer because I'll tell you, that's the creamiest way to make them. And this is quite a bit. This is about five pounds of potatoes. Uh, not just for uh, <clears throat> two people. This is for a few more than two. And then just add your salt in. And I try not to add too much because people can add it at the table if they want to. If you like pepper, add your fresh ground pepper now. If not, wait till later. And then just start doing this very easy. Now the key to making good mashed potatoes, and I tell you this, you don't add the milk now. If you add the milk now, you never get rid of the lumps. I mean that. You have got to have the lumps mashed out of them. And that's why I'm using the paddle, because that's the way you do it. You, you mash the lumps out of them. And make sure that you drain all of the water out of them, because if you don't, you'll have a problem. All right, you can see these are pretty creamy already, because they're very, and you can't like cheat on say, well, I won't let them cook as long because I'm in a hurry. It's not going to happen. OK, so, so we're going to turn it up a little bit. Let me get my spatula here. And just make sure you get them around the sides. OK, there we go. Now you want to warm your milk. And I have milk warming over here. And you just, because see, if you put cold in there, they chill down so fast, and it's not good. So we just add, hey, ho, all right. 
usually happens to me. I'm not surprised when I use this mixer, it jumps out at me. And let them just go and whip and whip and whip. Let's come back to our steak, okay? Now, I would probably let this go ahead and brown and cook some more because I don't think this is totally and completely cooked through as much as I want to. But what I'm gonna do is bring the steak to the platter. Don't they look beautiful? These beautiful steaks are from Foodland. And to the drippings here, I'm gonna add some water because you have to. Keep that away from you so it doesn't burn you. All right? See the drippings, what, the nice, what it renders, that nice brown liquid in the bottom? That's what you need. If it's watery, it's not gonna be real good. So you want this nice brown liquid. Leave those little cloves of garlic in there. Now I'm gonna add a few mushrooms and we're gonna turn this up and let it crank. And then to these steaks, we have a, some cold water and we're gonna add some flour, a couple of tablespoons of flour to make our gravy. Because dad says to that mashed potatoes, you have to have good, rich, brown, mahogany gravy. And we're going to be making our gravy and we'll be right back in just a minute for our final scene for our Father's Day show. We'll be right back. Just go to ctvn.org slash at home to get all the recipes from today's show for free. That's right, no subscriptions. They're available online at no cost and more are being added each day. So join us at ctvn.org slash at home to get today's recipes now. Well, here we are at the final table. I want to show you, first of all, this is our T-bone steak dinner with a nice mushroom gravy, a thin gravy. And here's our strawberry shortcake. Remember I showed you how to do the biscuit and to sweeten the berries, just put it together with some Cool Whip. We've got our carrots, added a tossed salad that dad really likes, some broccoli, just very plain, our creamy mashed potatoes, there's our extra gravy, and down front is just a crusty piece of bread with some butter we put in the oven. What more could you want? Well, what I could want would be for every father to stand up and be a man to his family, to provide for them the very best that you can, and to honor your wife, honor your children, and be the man in that house by being a role model that's pleasing to God. And you do that by taking your children to church every Sunday, worship there, show them how much you love God, and then they will follow in your footsteps. Of all the things that my dad left me, and if it could have been a million dollars, it would not have been as special as the fact that I knew this was the most precious book to him in his whole life. He treated us, he loved us, not one time did he ever abuse my brothers or I in any, any shape or form. He was a loving father and today I honor him. I thank God that I was born into this family. I thank God for a man who could affect a change in my life and create in me a desire to know God like he knew God. And if you can do that, Father, you've accomplished everything there is in the whole wide world. Happy Father's Day. And be sure to join us the next time because it just wouldn't be the same without you, fathers. And you moms, too. We'll see you then. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Thank you for watching. Fresh produce provided by Jordan Banana, wholesalers of fresh fruit and vegetables in Dravosburg, Pennsylvania. Appliances provided by Decor Distinctive Appliances, a reflection of your good taste. Groceries provided by Foodland, where the answer is always yes. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.